Hi, Betsy Kamisic. I co-facilitate planning with job search success with my good friend, Dave Lawson, and I will be walking you through part two of this workshop. A little bit about myself. I'm a retired HR professional. I've been retired for almost six years and have been volunteering as a one-on-one -on -one coach and trainer in this ministry since that time. I'm gonna be moving through this material fairly quickly. So if any time you need to pause, feel free to pause. Our, our emphasis in this workshop is on planning. Dave already mentioned that in uh, part one. We want you to understand the critical planning steps. We want you to begin your action plan. And the reason for this is anything worth doing right is worth planning. And then we want you to take what you've learned and pass it forward. In part one of this workshop, we encouraged you to take a couple self-assessments and to think about cars, challenges, actions, and results that you have been faced with in your careers. We're now gonna talk about staying in your current career or checking out new careers. And I encourage you, you to look closely at job postings and at ONET. ONET, it, as Dave mentioned, is a website developed and maintained by the US Department of Labor that contains a wealth of information on job requirements, job descriptions. D Dave, I believe, misstated the, job, the URL, it's onetonline.org, not .com, but you'll find it. It's very easy to find. There is just a wealth of information on ONET. We're going to talk about transferable skills, skills that you have developed in one position or in school that could apply to an entirely different position. And I'm going to ask you to develop a specific plan to close the gap. Assuming there's a gap between your skill set today and the skill set in your de desired position, that's going to be part of your plan. And of course, it's always important to invest in yourself to pay large dividends. So what are transferable skills? They're skills that you have developed in other careers, at school, hobbies, volunteer activities, and I want you, as you're looking at job postings, look not only for a job title, the job location, the job duties, look for the skills that they're looking for and ask yourself, do I have these skills or do I have a version of these skills? So here's an example for you. A number of years ago, I was interviewing a woman stay-at-home mom had been out of the workforce for a number of years and she was looking to re-enter the workforce. We started talking about her recent work experience and of course she had none. And then I asked her about volunteer experience and she had a lot of volunteer experience, including she was the Girl Scout Cookie Area Coordinator. If any of you have ever, ever been involved in Girl Scout cookie sales, anything besides Girl Scout cookie consumption, you know that this is a huge assignment. This involves thousands of boxes of cookies. The, the skills involved include organization, multitasking, logistics, customer service, conflict management, so these are examples of transferable skills that this woman had, although she, they, it didn't occur to her that she had these because she was thinking she had to have skills from a work situation. Moving on. So here are, here's a list of just a few transferable skills that many of us have. And you'll see that some of these, I, I included in my description of the Girl Scout cookie coordinator. It's possible that very few people listening to this workshop have ever actually held the position customer service representative, but almost every job includes customer service skills. And how about conflict management? Have you ever been in a position 
when you needed to manage conflict? Could you describe yourself as adaptable if you ever had a position that included change in direction from above on a regular basis? Of course, you know already how we feel about planning in this workshop, so I will skip over that one. Do you consider yourself as someone who works well independently or as a team player or both? So these are all skills that you may have developed in one job, in one volunteer activity, in one team activity that can apply to uh, another position. If you are over 50 and think that may be a problem in a job search, I want you to turn that thinking around. I want you to think of yourself as mature and experienced, not old. The Society for Human Resource Management is a national organization for HR professionals. They did a study a couple years ago and found that older workers have more knowledge and skills, valuable tacit knowledge, and institutional knowledge. The same study described older workers as more mature and professional. So you may, if you are over 50, you may be concerned about competing with millennials. Think about the skills that you have developed throughout your career that possibly a millennial just has not had the time to develop communication skills, business contacts, highly specialized skills. If you find yourself in an interview situation and you think you might be competing for that position with a millennial or two, take the opportunity to point out that you are very capable to serve in a coaching or mentoring role. A new job in your current career or an entirely new career path which makes the most sense. Generally, a new position in your current career makes the most sense because you have valuable work experience in that career. But occasionally, for a variety of reasons, it's time to make a change, a drastic change. So if you're at that point in your career, I want you to take some time for personal reflection. I want you to think about results and accomplishments that you have achieved, Remember cars, think about previous jobs that you've really enjoyed, parts of those jobs that you've enjoyed. Think about things that you never want to do again. Think about kudos that you've received. Again, whether it's in work situation, a volunteer situation, education situation. Consider places that you've successfully volunteered and consider friends whose occupations you admire. Many of us have a passion that becomes a hobby. We go to our day job to pay the bills, and then evenings and weekends, we focus on our passion. Occasionally, a person can take a passion and turn it into a career. So do you have a passion? Cooking, maybe? Gardening, cabinet making, or something else? A couple of years ago, I met with a guest in the care center who loved gardening. She apparently had a beautiful yard. Friends and neighbors asked her to help them design their yards. And through word, word of mouth, totally just word of mouth, she developed a successful business in landscape design. So is there a passion in your life that could be a career? Sometimes you feel like you need a change but you're skeptical or anxious about making a huge change. So here's some examples of change that may feel less frightening. A related but different position. One example might be a nurse in the ER decides to transition to pediatrics. Another example might be an inside salesperson who decides to transition to outside sales. How about a cross-functional team? Here, the example I like here is you work for a company that's developing a company-wide database and they're forming a task force. They need a person from every department to be on this task force. I encourage you to volunteer to be on that task force. 
You're going to go to a meeting once a week or twice a month, and you're going to talk about what is needed in your department for this new company-wide database. But you're also going to have an opportunity to interact with people from other departments, find out the kind of work that they truly do. You're going to have an opportunity to, to network with decision makers in other departments. It's a great opportunity to learn more about the company that you work for and the opportunities that exist. Contractual work is always a possibility. Occasionally, for budgetary reasons, an entire corporate department will be eliminated. Sadly, for both myself and Dave, who are in, in the training business, it's often a training and development department that is eliminated. But training still needs to happen. And, and often, and whether it's new hire training or continuing professional education for current employees, training still needs to happen. So occasionally the company that eliminated their training and development department will hire one or more of their former employees to continue to provide training on a contractual basis. So think about that as an opportunity. Entrepreneurship. If you, again, if you have a passion or a knowledge, whether it's gardening, uh, as I mentioned in the prior slide or something else, and you're thinking about starting your own business, I strongly recommend that you attend our entrepreneur classes that hopefully will be able to happen in person in the next month or two. But I have a little example for myself that I want to share with you. As I mentioned earlier, I retired from a corporate HR position about six years ago. And I thought I'd like to do some HR consulting. I figured that maybe I could work two days a week. It'd be a nice transition from full-time employment to retirement. And I know a lot about HR and I know a lot of business people. So I started Kamesic HR Consulting. In my almost six years in this business, I had one paid assignment. And the reason is I'm not interested in marketing myself and marketing is absolutely essential. So if you're thinking about starting your own business, figure out who's going to do the marketing. If you don't want to do the marketing yourself, you're going to need to hire someone to do the marketing. Work does not fall into your lap. Volunteering. I think I've already talked enough about about volunteering that you know that I personally like volunteering. I think volunteering is a great opportunity to, to make a change in your life. If you're in a position that you feel you need a change, but there's no change on the horizon, look for a volunteering opportunity. It gives you a chance to develop new skills, hone former skills, and network. Next slide. So getting started in a different career. If you have decided that for whatever reason, it's time to look for a different career, there are, there's some serious research that I want you to do. I want you to research the desired field. You're gonna go to ONET. You're gonna look at job postings. You're gonna figure out what is required. And I want you to focus on careers that are increasing in numbers rather than decreasing. And we'll talk more about that later. You need to identify training and certification that may be necessary to make this jump. And again, you'll see that at ONET or in job postings. As far as formal education, you're need, gonna ask, need to ask yourself, how do you feel about going back to school? Does that sound like a good thing? Or a bad thing. It's possible if you need to go back to school that there is grant funding available. There is a national grant uh, available called WIOA. WIOA is Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act and it's a national program that in Illinois is managed by the Illinois Department of Employee Employment Services. So there is money available if this career that you decide needs new training or certification, there's quite a possibility that there's money available. And when you, I want you to think about internships. Internships are not just for 20 year olds anymore. They are often unpaid, but they give you great experience. 
They give you an opportunity to have something to put on your resume that is relevant to this new career. And they give you an opportunity to literally check out the career. I encourage you to ask other professionals who you may know who are in this particular career for advice. Call the person, email the person, ask if you can buy them a cup of coffee and have a candid conversation with them about their career, asking what they love and what they don't love, keeping in mind that there are no perfect careers. So as I mentioned earlier, I want you to think about the number of positions in the career that you're considering, whether it's your current career or a new career. For example, you probably don't want to become a travel agent at this point. And I say that because most of us do our own travel planning. Here are four career categories, four career fields that have many, many positions. And all four of them have a wide range of positions. Healthcare, for example, not all positions are direct patient care. Not all positions are doctors and nurses. There are tech positions in healthcare. There are HR positions, customer service positions, billing positions. Almost any position that you can think of will fall under a large healthcare organization. Tech jobs, there are lots of tech jobs and they vary from a relatively low level of technical skill to a very high level of technical skill. Trades, skilled labor, and manufacturing. There are many, many positions. Manufacturing specifically, uh, manufacturing organizations, manufacturing plants are not dirty. They're not like they were 30, 40, 50 years ago. They're bright, they're well lit, they're air conditioned in the summer, they are heated in the winter, and there are positions available that pay seventy dollars to $80,000 a year. So think about trades, skilled labor, or manufacturing. Management positions, there are always management positions in every organization. Next slide. So whenever Dave and I teach this class, I always try to find a current list of the most in-demand jobs at the time. And this is the most unusual list I have ever found in the six years that we've been teaching this class. I found this on LinkedIn. I'm not gonna go over the list uh, in any detail. You can pause now if you wanna look at it. I'm pretty sure that this list is a function of COVID-19 you will see that there are positions on this list that require no experience and positions on this list that require a high level of experience and education. So this list is just for your review. Next slide. It certainly seems like a recession may be on our horizon. Is there such a thing as a recession-proof job? Absolutely. And the four top categories of recession-proof jobs are medical, law enforcement, teachers, and technology. So give this some thought. Of course, there are no guarantees in life, in employment, um, but if you're looking to make a change of career, a recession-proof career path might be something to consider. Next. So as I mentioned earlier, the in-demand positions have a wide range of required experience and education. Uh, for example, healthcare. You can enter the healthcare field as a pharmacy tech or as a certified nursing assistant with about 16 weeks of education. You can become a transplant surgeon with about 12 to 14 years of education and many thousands of dollars of college debt. So for you personally, what makes sense at this point in your career? Next slide. 
So if you are considering career shift, there are a number of things to consider. Realistic appraisal of the new responsibilities. So my example in the last slide about a certified nursing assistant, you can become one in 16 weeks. It's an important job. There are a lot of opportunities available. Uh, however, there are duties that, that many people might not be interested in doing for eight hours a day. So think about how quickly I can get into this job, but ask yourself, is this really a job I want to consider? Rigors of ramping up, any new job is gonna require some ramping up. Financial burdens. If you've been in your current career for a while and you're moving into an entirely new career, it's quite possible that you're gonna take a pay cut and you just need to be aware of that. Your experience in your old career is not necessarily gonna result in a similar pay rate in your new career. This is only a starting point though. You will certainly move up. Downward mobility and authority. Maybe in your current career, you're at a managerial, managerial or supervisory or lead position. And in your new career, you may be a staff person again. So you need to ask yourself how you're going to feel about that. Relocation. Some new positions require relocation. If that's a good thing for you, go for it. Family concerns. Is it possible that this new career will have a negative impact on your family work-life balance? So these are six things to think about if you're deciding to move into a new career. So we're gonna talk about that job search plan. Why do you think I emphasize the importance of developing a plan and putting that plan in writing? Anything, as I said earlier, anything worth doing right, it's important to have a plan. And if you don't have this plan in writing, a plan that you will either review or tweak on a regular basis, if you don't have it in, on, in writing, it's going to be very easy to lose focus or to hold yourself accountable. So I ask you to put it in writing. And here are some of the things that I want you to put in your plan. I want you to search for jobs that are a good fit based on those assessments that Dave talked about in part one. I want you to research target companies. I recommend that you pick 10 companies, at least 10 companies that you want to work for. Follow them, try to connect with someone who works for them on LinkedIn. I recommend that you check one or more job boards twice a week. I recommend that you check the websites for your target employers at least twice a week. You can probably sign up for email notifications from both of the above, certainly for job boards and possibly from your target employers. That way, every time they post a new vacancy, you will know. I want you to carefully track your activity. I recommend an Excel spreadsheet, but you use whatever you want. But it's important that you track and that you keep track of every job that you apply for because you're gonna apply for a job tomorrow or the next day or next week. And then you're gonna get a call in three weeks or in three months. And the person's gonna say, hi, I'm calling from ABC Corporation about your application for our vacancy. And I want you to be able to answer intelligently as opposed to saying, oh, I don't remember what job I applied for at your company. Can you help me? You are not gonna be making a good first impression if that's your response. So keep track of your activity. Never stop until you land. And I ask you to keep the faith. Engage your passions and strengths. Network, network. If you're not volunteering right now, I encourage you to volunteer. Find, find something that will engage your strengths and passions in a volunteer opportunity. It'll give you an opportunity to network and develop some new skills. I want you to understand that this process will probably not be fast. You need to be patient and consistent and be prepared for that roller coaster. 
continue to pray for God's guidance and persevere. I wish you all the best in your job search. If there's anything else, employment services at Willow can do for you, go back to this website where you found this slide deck and ask for help. Best of luck to you.